iPhone was prominently displayed showing iOS 12 during Apple's developer convention. However, there's still a lot of new features coming exclusively to the iPad, so let's go ahead and dive in. Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here for Apple Insider. I have my 12.9 inch iPad Pro running iOS 12. One of the first things we noticed is that the status bar has been redesigned with a hole in the center, possibly for a notch supporting Face ID in the future. On the left hand side, the time now resides along with the date, so the date is a new addition in the status bar as well. On the right hand side, we have the other indicators including battery life, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi and cellular if you're rocking a cellular version. The iPad also got a lot of new gestures, many inspired from the iPhone X. For instance, swiping down from the right hand top corner allows you to access Control Center. Notification Center on the other hand can be accessed by swiping down from the top left hand corner or from the center as you always have in the past. Another iPhone X inspired design, using one finger swiping up from the bottom can take you directly to your home screen. It can get a little bit confusing because a small movement up will allow you to access the dock, but moving all the way to the center or flicking will take you to the home screen. You can use one finger to quickly change between apps. Four finger swipe still works just fine, but now you can just use one finger jumping between, just like on the iPhone X. Clearly, a lot of these design choices kind of signal a forthcoming change to the iPad, one where there may not be a home button and there might be Face ID, making a lot of these make a little bit more sense. Swiping up with one finger and then holding in the center will allow you to access the app switcher, again, something ported from the iPhone. Not only does that new swiping gesture work from within applications, it works from the lock screen as well. So I'll go ahead and authenticate and unlock with Touch ID. You can see it's unlocked at the top, and now just to swipe up from the bottom gets me in. Let's go ahead and repeat one more time, but this time we'll swipe up first, then it'll ask for passcode or Touch ID, and then gets you in. It would be really seamless if it had Face ID. Alongside a big redesign, the Stocks app will now be coming to the iPad. It has a really nice split pane design with a stock list on the left hand side, metrics along the top, and integration with Apple News below that on the right. We are also gaining voice memos, which has a new design icon and a bunch of design changes in the app as well. Aside from the newly redesigned interface, there's also a slew of new preferences available in the settings app allow you to change things like the default audio quality, when the voice memos automatically get deleted, and the default naming convention. News has been around for a while on the iPad, but it got a pretty big redesign here with iOS 12. You can now see a lot of the information there on the left hand side with the bulk of the actual articles and editorial content on the right hand side. It makes it a little bit easier to jump through the categories that you're interested in or any of the brands or publications that you're following when you find one that you want to dive into, perhaps Apple Insider, which you should totally be following on Apple News. You can pull that up on the right hand side and see all of our latest articles dive in, read them, get to the comments, all of that. It works really, really nice and looks very similar to the app on the Mac. Inside of Control Center, when you start a screen recording, the UI has changed just a little bit. Tapping the thing will start a three second countdown. Top right hand corner, you'll see a little alert letting you know that screen recording is currently happening. When you tap on that, it'll prompt you to stop or cancel the screen recording. Then you'll get an alert on the top of the screen letting you know that the video has been saved to the Photos app. In the past, you could use two fingers to move around the keyboard and act kind of as a trackpad. Now that works just on the spacebar by touching and holding and then moving your finger back and forth, allowing you to easily move the cursor. Photos got a pretty big major update here in iOS 12 and lots to do with the importing. Importing is now a whole lot faster than it has been in the past, especially if you're using the USB 3.0 version of the SD card connection kit. Once we plug it in, we notice a lot of nice enhancements here on our iPad. It's really nice to be able to see your actual import over screen by using the slide over view of the photos. You can see all the photos pulling in as it's reading them from the card. If we go ahead and make this full screen to see a little bit easier and we go all the way up to the top, we notice there's now a new section. The new section will show you already imported photos. This makes it easier to identify what you've already imported versus what you have not imported yet. This is a pretty huge feature for people who import a lot of photos like I do. Once you have that card connected, you'll also notice at the top of the screen a little item number giving you how many items are actually on the card and the size amount that it's taking up on the SD card. As I start to select photos, it'll give me a count as well as how much storage I'm eating up with every photo that I include. So I'm going to go through my list here, add a bunch of different photos, and then one of my favorite new features in the top left hand corner, you actually have a drop down that allows you to choose the location of the import. So if you want to put all of these new imports directly to an album, 
you can. That is amazing because before you had to import everything directly into your library, then move it manually into an album. This makes things a whole lot easier and really enhances the professional workflow. Go ahead and tap on import in the top right hand corner. Make sure you choose select it or all. And then you're gonna notice that little progress circle. If you tap on that progress circle, it'll tell you it's importing X out of X, giving you a good idea of where you are and the number still remaining. Overall, there was a lot of improvements to the messages app but most of them relied on the iPhone 10 and their Face ID True Depth camera system. So on the iPad, you don't get quite as many of the nice new features. So if we're looking at taking a photo, the process is still changed just a little bit differently than it is on the iPhone. I can snap a really creepy looking photo of myself and now I have three different options on the right hand side. I can instantly send it with that big arrow. I can jump in and edit the photo so I can crop it down, adjust the coloring, really just enhance it any way that I'd like, or I can get into markup using all the tools on the cross the bottom. Now there are a few different changes to markup that we saw on the iOS side, including adjusting the width, adjusting the opacity, and having a lot more colors available to choose. The last option that I want to touch on really quick has been personally bothering me for a long time, and that's when using an external keyboard and the spotlight shortcut. So tapping command spacebar will open up spotlight, but in the past, using a keyboard, it would not automatically re-highlight the text, making you have to backspace a bunch before you could re-enter something. Now, as you can see, every time I tap spacebar, it automatically highlights the text, allowing me to immediately start typing and search for something else, a new app to open, a term, whatever it may be. It makes the professional workflow a whole lot easier. So that is everything new specifically with the iPad inside of iOS 12. There's so much new stuff in iOS 12 in general, so make sure you check our dedicated video on that. Let us know what you guys think, or if you find anything else, down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media and we'll see you in the next video.